Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. This is going to be another video of the shader series. So we are still working with uh, our work in progress uh, lighting shader, this one here. And uh, last time we moved the calculation from the um, vertex shader to the fragment shader. And I said that in the next video we would have looked uh, how to implement multiple lights instead of only having the possibility of using a single light. But before we do this, um, I wanted to produce this effect of having uh, an outline on an object, on a three-dimensional object. So I made a little research and I came up with a way of implementing this um, inside our shader. So before we go on with the, um, using multiple lights, I would like to uh, implement this um, effect. So this is going to be a practical case in which we actually want another effect on top of the light and that we would have to write um, by ourselves in a shader. So we would, um, for example, modify the GGL material shader in order to achieve this effect. And so it's always good to know how to, how to do that. And since we are building our own custom shader from scratch, we will go on by implementing this in our custom shader. Now, as you can see, I've conveniently hidden the, the ground because this effect on the ground doesn't apply uh, very well. That's because of how the normals of a cube work. Uh, so for the moment, we are not going to bother with, uh, with cubes or planes. We are just going to see how this works on uh, kind of um, uh, not flat surfaces. As you can see on the sphere, it works the best. And on the duck, it doesn't, it works also um, pretty well on the duck as well. Uh, let's actually use also the default white image uh, texture on the sphere in order to have the light applied instead of using a video. So I just change the name of the texture of the sphere. Okay, so we are going to go inside the shader and see how to implement this effect. It's super simple actually. So this is the patch as we left it last time. This is the, this is the shader as we left it as we left it last time and so let's go inside the fragment shader because this is a um, pixel effect so we are going to use this um, uh, we are going to implement this effect inside the fragment shader uh, let's maybe uh, let's first implement it uh, simply inside the main function and then we can see if we can extrapolate it as a as a function of its own so how does this effect work I uh, made a little ugly drawing here that should kind of explain how this works. So we're going to use the normals of the object. For example, if we have a sphere, uh, we're going to use the normals and the direction from which the eye is looking. Okay, so when the eye is 90 degrees or something like that, or approaching 90 degrees from the normals, we basically know that this means that uh, the normals are perpendicular uh, from our point of view, which means that we can uh, create an outline there because it will be the um, outmost point of the object in general. So it's super simple. We are going to use the dot product of these two vectors normalized, the i vector and uh, mm, the normal vector. And we're going to take the, um, the dot product of these two vectors, which is the result of the cosine of the angle between these two vectors. And we are going to test it to see if it's close to zero in order um, to see where we can apply the outline. Okay, so it's very simple. Let's do that. So let's create a float dot i norm, for example, which means the dot product of the i vector and the norm vector. And now we are going to do like this dot of. Uh, we first need to normalize those vectors. So normalize. And then we got these vectors, if you remember, inside our JIT per vertex structure. So what comes in from the vertex shader, which is the I vertex. And then we're going to use also the I normal vector. So since the I vertex is a vector that comes from the I to the vertex of the shape, so whatever we are looking at, it comes to the vertex of the shape, uh, we have to reverse it. So we get the vector that goes from the vertex to the I. Okay, so let's do like that. Minus jit in i normal. Uh, sorry, i vertex. Okay, so we normalize it and we reverse it. And then the normalized jit in dot i normal. 
So we take the dot product with it between these two vectors, okay? Now, seems I made a mistake. Oh, I missed, I misspelled that I vertex. Okay, so now we got the dot product between, between these two uh, vectors, which is basically the value of the cosine between, uh, of the angle between the two vectors. Okay, so what we need to do now is to say, to kind of include this uh, vector between 0 and the value of the vector, because we are not interested in the values that are negative. We could also skip this step, I think, because actually we are, it doesn't really matter, but uh, let's kind of clamp it between 0 and positive values. So max of that and dot i norm. Okay, very well. So now we clamped it between 0 and whatever values, positive values it has. And now we can use this value, for example, in a mix function. So, for example, or let's do first like this. So let's create um, a back for, call it final color, and first assign it to uh, light intensity multiplied by the texture color. So actually the color we were using until now. Okay, so let's replace this line with the final color. Nothing changes. Um, cool, now let's say that if the dot i norm is less or equal of, uh, let's say, 0 0.5, then final color is going to be equal to a vector, like, for example, of the color red. So let's see what we get. Oh, exactly. So we're starting to get our outline. As you can see, it's super big. And uh, the amount of these... Uh, the amount of the thickness of the outline is basically this number here. So the smaller this value becomes, the smaller will be, the, the less thick will be the outline. So for example, let's say 0 0.3. Okay, so this is one way we can achieve this, uh, this effect. The other way we can kind of try to improve it is to make a little, make a little smooth interpolation between the outline and the color of the shape. So we can do it like that. Instead of using an if statement, we can use the mix function. So let's say final color equal the mix of um, this vector that we just created. Our final color, which is at this point, is the light in intensity multiplied by the texture color, and using as a value, for example, this dot i norm value so let's see what we get with that okay as you can see we get uh, this is too um, this is a, a linear interpolation between these values is not really what we want so what we could do is for example to use a smooth step function that uh, for example goes between uh, under 0 0.2 is gonna give us a zero which means the outline coiler and above 0 0.3 is going to give us uh, uh, the color of the light intensity multiplied by the texture color. So let's add the parentheses here. And there we go. There we go. We have it a bit smoother. Now we have a smooth kind of uh, interpolation between the color and uh, the outline. If we set this to 0, for example, you can see that the smoothness is even bigger. If we set it something to 0 0.7, you can see that we have... Um, a bigger yeah, amount of interpolation. So according to how much you want this to be smooth or unsmooth, you can set those two values. And of course, we could also uh, we could also tie these two things to uh, some uh, uniform uh, parameters that we could modify from our patch. But okay, so that's the that's the gist of it. Uh, what we could do is, for example, use um, a parameter to change the color of the outline, right? So let's do it, let's do it um, here. So after the light intensity, let's create another parameter. Let's call it U uh, outline color. This is going to be a vector 4. And as default value, we can make it, for example, red. So this is going to be 1.0, 0, 0.0, 0.0, 1.0 for the alpha. Okay. And then let's tie that to the fragment program. So bind param u outline color 
program equal fb. Okay, so now we got it, we can implement it here inside our shader. So in the fragment shader, uniform back for u outline color. And then we can use that here instead of this vector for exactly. So now from our patch, we can go here. And uh, this is the, actually the, the uh, this is the shader we are working with. Let's actually make it a different color. Let's make it a bit, uh, yeah, this green color. So we can also use the swatch object and say, oh no, wrong. If I could create a message here, param u outline color. Or let's maybe just use a prepend object. Param u outline color. Okay. So now we should be able to modify the color of the outline using this swatch object. Yeah, which works. So, okay, pretty cool. The cool thing about this object, impl uh, this implementation of this effect, is that is only per object. So you could choose some objects to have this effect and some objects to not have it, right? Instead of using uh, um, an effect that is applied to the final texture, that um, to a post-processing effect. So this is not a post-processing effect, this is an effect applied directly to the shape. So this makes it pretty cool. Okay, let's maybe go back to the shader and uh, put this thing inside the um, function. So let's do like this. Let's create another function here. And uh, let's say that this returns a vector four. And let's call it, or maybe let's say that it doesn't return anything. And let's call it outline effect. And this takes as input, uh, um, so as an input, it takes a back three, which is i vertex, and then another input back three, which is the i norm. And then it takes also a vector four as an input and output. So we are going to write as well on this, on this, para on this variable. Um, this is going to be our final color. So we call it input output because we are going both to use it as an input and we're going to write on it on the output. So we can basically cut this line. We can cut this line here, put this inside here. Oops. So flood the uh, GT in uh, I vertex. This we don't need to call it JIT in because this is going simply to be I vertex. I norm. And okay, so that's okay. Oh, it's complaining that, uh, and okay, of course, I still have to change this stuff. So, can also cut this ear, put it inside here. So, final color is equal to outline color, which should be a global variable. Final color and smooth step, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, this should work. And in fact, we can see that the shader is compiling again. So we can see now outline effect equal to, uh, sorry, what am I saying? Outline effect here takes inside the JIT in dot I vertex, JIT in dot I norm. Uh, is this called I norm? I normal. Okay, and then the final color. So now we should have our outline. Uh, something is wrong, something is wrong. Oh yeah, sure. I, <laughs> I wrote I vertex instead of I norm. That's why it doesn't work. Oh well. That's bizarre, but kind of solved itself. Okay, there was a little bug, but uh, it seems to be gone. Um, okay. Yeah, that works, that works. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we can say... Could have a black outline which looks pretty cool. A bit this uh, cartoonish effect, which I'm sure will look pretty cool with like a tune shader. So um, I'm thinking if we should use like the alpha value of this to 
say if we want to actually use the outline at all. So we could say, for example, if the if the alpha value is uh, bigger than zero, then use the outline color, otherwise don't use it. So we could maybe do that. So let's do like this. Let's do like this here. So instead of creating another parameter, another uniform parameter, we just uh, use the same one and we use the alpha value, which anyway, we are not probably going to use for something else. So if you outline color dot a is greater than 0.0, .0 then um, use the outline effect, which by default will be on. So let's actually put it off by default by putting a 0.0, .0 here. And the effect is gone. So inside our patch, let's actually do like this. So let's say pack param outline call. No called u outline color f f f f so let's take only the first second and third so not the alpha here so this we are going to attach here and then for the alpha we can simply use a toggle for example exactly so this means activate the effect and this means uh, they activate the effect exactly and this is just going to be the color of the outline okay so yeah pretty cool i like a lot this effect i have to say yeah i just wanted to put it on uh, put it on the table and put it inside the shader let's actually put this inside the sub patch old vertex shader exactly and uh, yeah, in the next video, we're definitely going to see how to use multiple lights inside a shader. Okay, so thank you for following. I hope you liked this video. And uh, if you didn't have already, you can subscribe to the channel and check my Patreon to check more patches and uh, the Discord community and um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of material, actually. Okay, so this was it for today. See you in the next video. Ciao. Thank you.